Are you looking for a graphics card that will make you the envy of the PCMR? Well, this isn't it. But if you want to see if the A750 is a competent GPU at 1440p gaming and 1080p streaming, well, this is the video for you, and we should be able to tell you that by the end, hopefully. But first, do you ever work with some big YouTubers that give you a coupon code for their PC selling business that just doesn't work? <laughs> Me either. But if you're looking for a pre-built gaming PC that may or may not have an Intel Arc GPU in it, check out today's sponsor, PCBros.Tech. Do you want a custom gaming PC, but you're too scared to build, I mean, uh, you don't want to be your own technical support? Well, today's video sponsor can help. Hop over to PCBros.Tech. PC Bros was started by Matt and Jackson of the popular YouTube channel Toasty Bros to create a place where gamers can buy gaming PCs for a fair price and because they needed the money. All PCs at PCBros.Tech come with a one year warranty and are assembled by PC experts. So if you're looking for a quality gaming PC, go to PCBros.Tech today and use code PINKYTECH4 for 4% off your order. Now back to our regular programming. So I put the Intel Arc A750 to the test today in gaming, streaming, and ray tracing so you'll know if it's worth buying. Now, if you're interested in the test setup today, it's going to be down in the description box below. But it's essentially my gaming PC, which is an Intel 10850K, uh, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM at 3600 CL16, and a Z490 motherboard. So I guess you don't need to bother checking the description now. All right, before we get to the results of the A750 testing, we need to get a good baseline of performance for a card that's reasonably, or not reasonably priced, but similarly priced, uh, so we have a good baseline for performance. Enter the RTX 3060. Now, if you didn't know, the RTX 3060 has a base clock of 1320 megahertz and has 12 gigs of VRAM. That's right, we're using the 12 gig version, not the eight gig version, um, but it is limited to a 192 bit memory bus. So we'll see how that affects performance in the benchmarks. So to test out ray tracing, we have selected both the Cyberpunk built-in benchmark as well as Port Royale uh, to just get a, a baseline of ray tracing for the RTX 3060. Now the Port Royale score for the RTX 3060 was 5063 and Cyberpunk we got a whopping 39 FPS with ray tracing turned on and also DLSS set to performance mode to just basically give the 3060 a chance. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, Ray tracing on the RTX 3060 is absolutely pointless because if you have to turn on all the upscaling technologies to actually get performance out of it while ray tracing, what's the point of turning on ray tracing? It's still not going to look that good. So please don't use ray tracing on the RTX 3060. It's kind of a waste of time. There's too much of a performance loss. Now with that ran over, we can turn our attention to superposition, which we use to just test raw rasterization performance for the GPU. And the RTX 3060 scored a respectable, if not an impressive score of 7,234. Now taking a look at some of the built-in benchmarks in games, first off we have Cyberpunk with no ray tracing or DLSS, and we're running at 1440p high settings. The RTX 3060 scored an average of 49 FPS, in Borderlands 3, once again, 1440p high settings, the RTX 3060 scored 72 FPS, and in Rainbow Six Siege, using those same settings, we got an average of 152 FPS. Now for actual gaming, we tested out both Fortnite and Apex Legends, and the RTX 3060 at 1440p high settings scored an average of 80 FPS in Fortnite. Now I know people normally use low settings and 1080p in Fortnite, but I didn't, and it's my test and it's my video, so... Nah. And then in Apex Legends, we scored an average of 123 FPS. And yes, that number is correct. And I did not know that Fortnite with DirectX 12 is now actually harder to run than Apex Legends is. So now that we have a good comparison for performance, let's go ahead and get the A750 installed. Now with the A750, before I installed it, I did go ahead and remove all the NVIDIA software, including NVIDIA Broadcast, and I also used Display Driver Uninstaller to remove the drivers so that we have as clean an environment as possible without doing a full reinstall of Windows for the A750. All right, so a quick issue I ran into here is uh, power. So I only have one 8-pin because that's what the RTX 3060 takes, but this thing actually needs an 8-pin and a 6-pin. So... Um, luckily I have a modular power supply and I have, uh, the cables. The bad news is, is now I have to go try to fish that out of the storage room. Yeah. All right. So if you have a storage room and you get the option, roller shelves, Ooh, get behind here. Also daylight bulbs would work very well too. 
Um, this luckily isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be because, well, quite frankly, rolling shells. Uh, SATA cable, SATA cable. Ha, ah, VGA, we're in luck. All right. So now that we have that, let's go get this installed into the power supply. Hopefully I don't have to take everything apart. And we should, uh, we should be rocking and rolling with this A750 install. Enter the Intel Arc A750. Now the Intel Arc A750 has a base clock of 2050 megahertz, eight gigabytes of VRAM, and a 256-bit memory bus. So in every category except for VRAM, the Intel Arc A750 should absolutely have its way with the RTX 3060. Consensually, of course, and with copious amounts of respect and admiration, of course. All right, so taking a look at ray tracing on the A750, the Port Royale score came out at 6,412. And yeah, I ran that three times, just like I did on the RTX 3060 to make sure it was correct. Interestingly enough, Cyberpunk came back at 34 FPS with ray tracing enabled and Intel XESS set to performance mode or, or basically the same settings there. And it scored worse, even though Port Royale scored better. And I think at this point, all we're seeing is really just how much better mature DLSS is versus Intel XESS or XSS or, or whatever, Intel's upscaling options, basically. In superposition, the Intel Arc A750 mercilessly spanked, mercilessly, mercilessly, mercilessly spanked the RTX 3060 with the score of 9752. So the edge goes to the A750 and just raw rasterization performance. Turning back to gaming with all the same settings as before, the A750 turned in on Cyberpunk an average of 58 FPS. It also scored 63 FPS in Borderlands 3, as well as 139 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege. So the RTX 3060 is not going down without a fight here. The A750 also scored 73 FPS inside of Fortnite, and its worst loss of the day, 80 FPS inside of Apex Legends, compared to the 123 FPS that the RTX 3060 put in. So we have a bit of a mixed bag here in gaming, with basically everything being relatively close, except for Apex Legends, which was a huge win for the RTX 3060. But then if you look at ray tracing performance and just raw rasterization, that then goes to the Intel Arc A750. And that's gonna lead me into the next point I wanted to make, which are drivers. Now the Intel drivers when they first came out were terrible, terrible, terrible drivers. And we all knew that. But then as of late, the Intel drivers have actually been getting much, much better, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. In gaming, for example, I could see that the GPU was not being fully utilized. However, the frame weights were just subpar or average. And we could tell this during Apex Legends. If you take a look at the usage on the actual GPU, we're never hitting that maxed out 99%, but the frame rate is much worse compared to the RTX 3060. So the drivers that are being used right now still have a lot of room for improvement. And that brings me to the other issue, which is there's not really a comprehensive list of games that I can point to that says these are good or these are bad. The closest thing I was able to find was a subreddit, which had a bunch of games and issues listed on it, but even that hasn't been updated since March and is no longer being maintained. So the best advice I can give you is if you want to get this for gaming, make sure that you look up whatever games you play in Intel Arc and issues and see what you can find on there before you make the plunge. Now, another thing to take into consideration is there's only eight gigs of VRAM on the Arc A750. And while that's going to be fine, in my opinion, for 1440p gaming for several years down the line, we're already starting to see pretty new unoptimized games like Hogwarts Legacy and The Last of Us uh, to where they'll don't really run very well on cards that have uh, 8 gigs of VRAM. You're really looking for 12 or ideally 16 gigs of VRAM for games like that. So just know that in those type of games, and this isn't an ARC issue so much as just a VRAM limitation, that in those games you may not be able to play at maxed out settings and may have to either drop some of the resolutions, some of the textures, some of the settings in general to get a nice, stable, smooth playing experience. But once again, I don't think eight gigs on a $250 card is really a problem and should be fine for most people for a while to come. Now it's usually about this time of the video where Nvidia's taking it in the shorts a little bit that all the Nvidia fanboys come out and start yelling, what about streamers, NVENC, NVENC? Yeah, let's address that now. Let's take a look at streaming and rendering.
All right, so you may remember when I compared the RTX 3060 to the RX 6600, and the encoders on the 6600 were pretty bad and laughably bad in some instances. And then you could get those encoders to work on the 6600. However, you'd really have to crank the bit rate in OBS to get either a nice crisp recording or a crisp stream, resulting in either very large file sizes or just tons of bandwidth being needed to maintain a good quality stream. Well, the Intel ARC A750 supports AV1 encoding. Now, AMD and NVIDIA do also support AV1 encoding. However, it's either on the 4000 series from uh, NVIDIA or on the 7000 series GPUs from AMD. All of those, by the way, are much more expensive options than the Intel Arc A750 is. Now, for screen recording, I was able to record basically twice as much gameplay for half the file size on the Arc A750 using AV1 encoding versus using the NVENC encoder on the RTX 3060. And that's a huge win for content creators as most video editing software is now starting to support AV1 encoding and decoding. And to get a sense of how well AV1 works for encoding, let's talk to my editor. Really? I mean, who are you guys expecting? I don't make that kind of money to be hiring editors around here. All right, so the A750, yes, it can stream. We did AV1 to YouTube. It had some good uh, qualities to it. Stream looked very well, didn't need a lot of bandwidth because the bit rate was so low, but still had a really crispy stream. Um, I've been playing around here in DaVinci Resolve. The editing feels the same way as it did with the RTX 3060. Uh, no real stutters or anything like that. So with DaVinci Resolve, the free version has been looking pretty good. Um, and then I did play around with a couple exports. And what I saw was inside of DaVinci Resolve, when I switched from using the uh, H.264 over to AV1 encoding, uh, it took less time to actually render the project out, which is fantastic, but on the plus side, it cut the file size down so much, it was pretty incredible. It went from like 2 gigs to like 200 megabytes, which then now has to get uploaded to YouTube, and so it's going to be fantastic all the way around because it's not going to take as long to upload, and then of course it's not going to take as long to process on the YouTube side. So. All in all, I'm going to call this a win for editing, for content creation, for streaming, all that good stuff. Once again, just check and make sure that whatever you're uploading to supports AV1, and I think you've got a winner on your hands. Now, for streaming, I was able to use the AV1 encoder on the ARC A750 at about a 7,000 bit rate inside of OBS, and I streamed to YouTube. And chat was saying that the stream was looking nice and crispy. Now, it didn't make me a better gamer, but... You know, everyone in chat could see me eating every bullet shot at me in crystal clear HD. And, and that's why they were there, not my elite gaming skills. Now, the caveat here, of course, is that out of the four major platforms, be it YouTube, Twitch, uh, TikTok, and Kik, um, I guess those are the major ones, uh, YouTube is the only one that actually supports AV1 encoding as of right now. And try as I might, I could not find anything official coming from any of the other platforms saying that they were going to be supporting AV1, that it's in the works or available or anything like that. The best I could find was some rumors that Twitch might start doing it, but rumors are like assholes. Everyone's got one, except my wife. She has two. Now let's talk a minute about pricing. So as I went down the content uh, creation rabbit hole for these two cards and making the comparison. The RTX 3060 was selling for about $250 and then the RK750 was selling for about the same price. Well, now there's partner cards for the Intel Arc A750 that are actually running for under $200, as low as I've seen it as $179. And the limited edition cards are going for about $215 to $225. So it's become an even better value at this point so long as you don't want, run into one of the situations that we talked about previously. Now I have affiliate links for both of those GPUs down in the description below, as well as links to my other socials like the Pinky Tech Discord server. So hop over there. Yeah. So do I recommend the Intel Arc A750? Well, yes and no. So for 1440p gaming, I think it's a fantastic card. Just make sure that you check and make sure that the games that you play are not affected by any of the bugs they currently have. Um, and if you stream to YouTube, I think the AV1 encoder is absolutely fantastic on this card. And you can make some really good looking streams coming through. Once again, if you stream to YouTube and play games that aren't affected by those bugs. For me, I would be able to use the card because the games I play haven't been affected, or at least uh, none that I could see. But regardless of any of that, I think it's time to really start uh, at least considering Intel as you're going through and making your decisions on your next GPU. 
So that's it for me, guys. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.